basketball at its best and speediest at the Madison Square Garden, New York. Indiana Sharpshooters versus Manhattan College. These are the two crack teams of the United States, and the fans at this increasingly popular game had a rare battle to watch. The accurate passing and straight shooting is an object lesson to anybody who thinks that this game is just a pastime for a girls' school. Indiana won by 42 to 34. Now in Australia, one-time champion Jack Crawford faces an unknown youngster Bromwich in the Sydney final. And Crawford only just got home. In some brilliant exchanges, the 18-year-old challenger showed that in years to come, he's going to develop into a real champion. In the doubles, Crawford and McGrath, near side, faced former champions Quiston Hoffman. Quist is one of the world's greatest doubles players, but today he doesn't strike his form. In superb style, Crawford and McGrath took the match with three straight sets, New South Wales champions for five years running. Millions and millions of silkworms in a castle in Kent have been working overtime to provide silk for coronation robes. They are being made for the Duchess of Gloucester and the Duchess of Kent, and we have secured this film record of the work. The silk is being hand-woven at Braintree in Essex, and this work is so laborious that it results in only three yards in a week. But the finished article is of a loveliness that cannot be achieved by machines. An interesting contrast comes from America, in the cotton fields of Tennessee, where they pick the stuff by mechanical means. Not content with a coal black mammy, the cotton picker has a petrol dad. With the beginning of 1937 came the beginning of the year's program for naval rearmament. Two new battleships are being laid down, one on the Tyne and the other at Birkenhead. They are the first capital ships to be built for Britain since Nelson and Rodney, which are 14 years old. Thus, the birth of a naval wondership, unsinkable. Here, the end of a merchantman. 600-ton diamond, Glasgow cargo boat, sank in the Thames off Green Hyde after collision with a Norwegian motor ship. Two lives were lost. America, the world's rarest animal. This is a giant panda brought from a remote jungle in mountainous Tibet. Eight weeks old and bottle fed, the giant panda is valued at $25,000. Reason he's so expensive is that you don't often see such a very small giant. Japan, not the bath night marathon, but a religious rite in the cultured pearl fishery. Here, the Pearl King of Nippon commemorates the 10 million oyster shells that have made him one of the world's richest men. In the words of the poet, to think what millions men can make out of an oyster's tummy ache. Spain, celebration of Christmas in the mountains of Guadarrama, where civil war still rages. After celebrating mass in the streets, parcels and wine were handed round, toasts were drunk. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Poor Spain. California. Army Aerodrome March Field put on a spectacular show. All for the benefit of General Emmons and pretty Rochelle Hudson. This was a charity show, but flying so low they needed more hope and still more faith. Pomona, college in the United States where local boy Robert Taylor used to work before he went into the film business. Of course, you know his name isn't really Robert. Do you remember our production of Journey's End, Arlington? Yes, indeed I do, Miss Prince House. And uh, you remember the time following Journey's End when you and I paid our first visit to the studio? I certainly do. How frightened we were. Hey, there's Bob Taylor. Oh, oh, oh. Class is over for the day. An autograph from the world's number one soulmate. The only degrees they'll get will be on a thermometer. <laughs> Starting off with a stirrup cup, the annual meet of the Percy Hunter Danik in Northumberland drew many hundreds into town. 
As the hunt clattered between the tall buildings through the streets, it made you think how much brighter London would be if they held one in Piccadilly. Out in the open country, we didn't get a picture of the fox. The reason was that our cameraman came over county and tried to get his pictures on horseback. <laughs> Americans are going south to find that better weather for bathing. Florida finds the girls in the beach clothes and they do everything but bathe. This year the cold in the north is driving the millionaires down in hundreds. They can't stand the cold. But in case you think there's nothing else in Florida, we're taking you to colorful tropical park where a millionaire's heartbeats turn to hoofbeats. The opening of the racing season. And for the next three months, the horse is king. Sweet music to the racing man, his thundering herd is off, and the bathing bell hasn't a bare chance. That outsider coming up on the rails, that's something you can look at with the naked eye. Into the home stretch, they come flashing with a burst of speed that makes a sunburnt lovely look like a cab horse. The favorite wins, but the blonde gets the money. Lost for the third test at Melbourne, and England took the field with two wins to their credit. They started by getting the Australians out fairly easily, and once again Don Bradman failed, being caught off Verity for 13. Allen's only opposition came from McCabe. Returning to something like his old form, he made the top score of 63 before being caught. The innings was declared closed for 200, for rain had turned the pitch into a bowler's dream of heaven. Bradman declared to give his own bowlers a chance, and they skittled the England team out for 76, Hammond making top score 32. Australia went in a game with the first innings lead of 124, and this time Bradman made no mistake. Flogging the bowling all round the wicket, he hit up a magnificent 270. The Australian second innings closed at 564, which left England to get 689 in the fourth innings. Men of the sea were engaged on an unusual job with a light ship and a cargo boat at Woolwich. The light ship, ordered by the Indian government, had to be taken to Rangoon, and she couldn't go under her own steam or sail because she hadn't any. So she was hoisted bodily aboard the cargo boat, 120 tons of ship making an ocean crossing as a passenger. Our cameraman took these pictures, hoping that the cargo boat would either get pulled over or sink. But everything went off smoothly, and everybody was satisfied except our cameraman. Visitors from abroad always go shopping in Bond Street, and these lion cubs brought back 